<clears throat> hello, hello. Welcome, Paulina. I'm so excited to have you. I want to give you guys a little background on my friend Paulina here. She graduated from Lakeville, the Lake Area Technical Institute in 2010 with a degree in cosmetology. And straight out of school, she opened her own single chair salon and realized pretty quick that she needed some more help in running a business. And she began studying in her spare time. And in June of 2012, she expanded her business and purchased a larger salon and started obtaining booth renters. In 2016, she decided to relocate and maintained ownership of the salon while taking on a job in the new area with a commission-based salon. Within that year, she was the top 17% of the company, which consists of over 10,000 stylists nationwide. Woo, kudos to you. And in the spring of 2018, she decided to go on her own again and began, began booth renting as well as having a job with a digital marketing agency. And she's been happy with that decision. So again, Paulina, welcome to the Live Fearlessly vlog. Thank you so much for jumping on with us and being willing to share your story. And how was your day going? Hey, Rebecca. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Um, it's a good day. Snowy Minnesota right now, but you know. <laughs> Gotta love winter in Minnesota. Yeah, definitely. Love hate relationship, right? Looks pretty, not fun yeah. to drive in. Exactly. <laughs> So, um, so Paulina, the way that I love to start these out is by sharing something that's kind of relatable and lets us know a little bit more about who you are, your background and those kinds of things. So go ahead and tell us something interesting about yourself and your life. Okay. So, um, I think we all know what it's like to want a job like that we love and we've all been there, but we always kind of compare ourselves to everybody else. Um, yeah. that's kind of what I wanted. And <clears throat> Like, oh, hair is a fun job, right? Well, I don't know. I guess I always knew I wanted to do it. But there's always struggles along the way, and I think we can all relate to that. Um, for me, it was more personal struggle than business struggle. Um, I grew up with a dad who owned a business, so I kind of, you know, had a little bit of background in that. But um, I had a couple things in my way. Like, I dealt with alcoholism in my family and with a spouse. So... I had to kind of overcome that and still maintain my business. Yeah. And that's a big thing to overcome and, you know, learn from seeing what was happening in your relationships and all those things. So, um, yeah, that's, I mean, people can probably relate to that a lot. We know someone that struggles with alcoholism or has those kinds of battles, um, as right. you said. So, um, so when, when fear was holding you down and you were, you know, in the mental state of all of that, how did you feel about yourself? I mean, you went through the transitions of pivoting your business and relocating and all those things like you mentioned in your bio. Um, but how did you feel about yourself in the transition of all of that? Um, well, it, it was tough. I knew what I was doing and I knew that I knew that, but I was always questioning every decision I made. Because, you know, growing up around that, I had to think, okay, am I doing the right thing? Am I going to end up doing that myself? Um, you know, am I doing what's best for them? Is there anything I can do to help those people who are, you know, because my life affected theirs just as much as it affected my own. Because, I mean, everything I did was kind of surrounded around them at that point. Um, taking care of them, trying to make sure that they weren't, you know, getting themselves in trouble or, you know, bad health. So I was trying to really juggle everything. I was trying to take care of myself as well as, you know, for other people. So that was kind of how that was going, but I knew I had to keep pressing forward through it all. It wasn't something that I could just be like, okay, I have, I'm going to succumb to this and I'm just going to handle it. Um, I, I was like, it's hard, but I have to keep going. That was right. all I could think, you know? Yeah. So. And, it, and it's your family. It's not like you can just right. walk away from that and be like, oh, you know, that really wasn't for me. It's not my problem. That's their life, their situation. And I don't have to succumb to what's happening with them. And you can't just like walk away. I mean, you definitely can, 
but it's your family, right? right? So that yeah, makes it a lot harder for your loved ones. Definitely. Um, so. As for like relocating, I got to the point where it was like, okay, um, my parents kind of got the situation under control. Um, my mom has been sober for 15 years now. Um, and my dad is only a social drinker. So we got that taken care of. But um, my spouse, on the other hand, I just, there came a point where I couldn't take care of myself anymore because I was so consumed with taking care of someone else. Yeah. And that person didn't want to accept the help from me. Um, in that situation, they really have to make that decision for themselves. No one else can make it. So it came to the point where I had to walk away and I had to do something different. Um, it was a really small town area. So staying there wasn't an option for me, right. but I didn't know what else to do. So um, I stayed there for a few months. I handled it and I decided that there was more to life than just sitting there. So I picked a random spot on the map didn't know anybody. I mean, I was scared shitless. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But, and I, I left. I just went for it. I don't think my parents really thought I was going until the day the trailer was packed. So, yeah. I mean, people dream of something like they romanticize about that, right? Like I know tons of friends that have romanticized about just relocating and just starting over from scratch where, Hey, nobody really knows your name, your family, or your situation and you can kind of just pivot your life and just start all over. I know tons of people yeah. that romanticize about that, but very few can say that they actually pulled the trigger and jumped in into that fear and were like, I'm just gonna do it. What's what's the worst thing that could happen? You know, maybe you find a better life. Right, so, exactly. And that, that's what happened for me. So Yeah. That's um, awesome. So so when you break free from the fear, you know, you let that fear hold you back for some time, I'm sure, with, with your family and that kind of thing. So once that was under control and then you made the decision to, you know, get out of your situation with your spouse who did not want your help um, and moving into the new direction, I mean, we have those relationships like your spouse and your family and those kinds of things. And obviously we talked about that a little bit, like how those relationships morph when we are transitioning ourselves, because not everybody understands when we're doing something good for us, it doesn't make sense for everyone else and that's fine, but those relationships change. And is there anything else that you want to talk about, like relationship wise that have changed from like your spouse, other than your spouse? Um, definitely. Um, when I, when I moved, I realized that I could take care of myself first and by doing that, I was able to take care of everyone else better too. Yeah. Um, I, I have so much better relationships now because I do take care of myself and I do think about myself and it, like I'm saying selfish, but it's not a bad thing to be selfish because if right. I'm not like at the mental capacity where I can take care of myself fully. I have nothing to give. Like if I'm so drained down from taking care of everybody else, there's nothing there. So yep. you have to be selfish and it's not a bad thing. And I know some people will take it that way, but that's kind of what you have to do first, yeah. because if you're not whole and happy and able to, you know, do that for yourself, there's no possible way to do that for anybody else. And you just have to kind of realize that and do it. So by doing that um, and starting over and not having those things hanging over my head, I was able to take care of myself and realize what I wanted to make myself happy and what that would take. And I was able to do that. And I was able to start building better relationships with people. So yeah, hundred percent. Like I always like to say, like, it's not selfish. Cause I used to say the same thing. I've always been a very bold person. I've always, I've always kind of put myself first knowing that I was the most important person because if I'm not happy, then nobody's going to be happy. And, um, I've really, I take, I take it as self love and self care more than being selfish because those things are way more important than, you know, doing just what we want, but it's for a purpose. It's for ourselves. And, um, I think that's a very strong point that you're, it's great to get it across. Like you are the most important person. So I love that. Um, so when, 
when you jump ship and we're like, okay, I'm moving, I'm doing this thing. I don't really know what this holds. Um, and you had a business already established. Like that's another strong point. Like you already had a route down that you were like, okay, I'm going to do this thing still and not let it hold me back. So what really, um, was there really a tipping point um, that we were like, okay, last straw, I'm just doing it? Or how did that look with you actually jumping and doing it? Um, for me, unfortunately, it was kind of a bad situation. And I hope that other people, you know, don't have that kind of story to go with it. But um, the tipping point for me was um, I had a miscarriage and that caused my divorce because oh. the alcoholism really is what affected that. Um, and after that had happened, um, it was flat out said, like, if you expect me to give up alcohol for you completely, you might as well leave me now. I was like, peace out. See you later. Like that was it for me. Um, and then I had to start getting my ducks in a row. So I, um, I stayed there during the process of the divorce, but I got, like, I picked the place and I got another job. So I was working seven days a week during that. And I was working out here um, to see that this was going to work for me. So I was working weekends out here and I was like, yeah, I can, I can do this. I can definitely do this. So as soon as I had that opportunity, I was gone. Um, right. It was just, like you said, un unfortunate the way that the tipping point came for me. But I mean, I, I grew up in a small town and I was always scared of something new. So it was, it was easier to transition into it where I was like, okay, I'm going to start working weekends there. And then once I got all like, okay, over that fear of like, oh my gosh, this is so new and I don't know what yeah. to do. They don't know anybody. I realized that it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. So that's kind of how I got where I'm at. Well, first of all, I'm sorry to hear that you had a miscarriage. It, I, I hear that more often than I would ever like to about situations that, you know, the stress levels and everything that goes into it, like you said, the self-care, like if it's not there, your body just doesn't work right. And the fact that that was your tipping point, um, unfortunately, that is unfortunate. And it happened for you to be able to find yourself more and, um, so again, I'm sorry to hear that that's what it was, but I'm really glad that, you know, you didn't let that still sit there and fester, you know, oh, that could be a different story after right. a miscarriage in a situation like that. There's tons of people that their story, they didn't switch it and they didn't right. make it into a positive, like this is another chance to make yourself whole. And yeah. um, so I'm so proud to say that that's your story, that you made it into your story. And as part of your story and your journey, to um, being able to step into something that was scary, but we have those fears every single day, no matter if it's something small, something tragic or whatever that is, but we all have that every day and how we step into it or step forward with it is just a mindset and, and how we wanna positively look at those things. So um, yeah, so thank you for sharing that. I know a lot of people will be able to relate to that, especially unfortunately, but um, yeah, so with, with getting into the, over those fears and making those steps, I know it was more tragic for you, but um, what advice would you give to people overcoming even any of the fears like that, you know, moving to a new location or stepping away from a, a spouse or a situation that just isn't healthy for them? What kind of advice would you give about the fear part of it? Um, the fear part of it, I think the biggest part in like the situation that I have was acceptance. Like we want everybody to like us and, you know, yeah. so that's why we drain ourselves. Um, advice wise, like all I can say is that I know for the longest time, I was the only one holding myself back. Like you have to get out of your own head. Like everything yeah. is going to be okay. And you have to know that, like, is it going to be perfect today? No, it's not. I mean, you're going to have bad days and that's okay but you just can't let that stop yourself. Like you have to stop having that mental block. You have to stop thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Like these people have to like me because the more you concentrate on that, the more that fear is present and you're just in your head blocking those people from actually getting to know you. Whereas yeah. if you let that go and just go out and be like, 
hey, I'm new here or, you know, I don't know you, but I'd like to, you know, have some friends. Like, do you recommend something I can do? Nine times out of 10, people were like, yeah, like, let's go here and have a drink or let's go out for supper or, oh, hey, you can come to this meeting with me. It's just a bunch of ladies and we all hang out, you know, and it works. Like, I stopped blocking myself from all the good things that I was capable of by doing that. And I got out of my own head. And sometimes I still have bad days where I'm like, oh my gosh, can I really do this? Like, is it really worth it? But I just hit that reset button every morning. Like, nope, today's a new day and it's going to be okay. And I can do this. And I've gotten so far with that. Like, I mean, I have little positive notes like in front of my bathroom mirror that I look at in the morning and that's how I start my day. So if you can just remember not to block yourself from the good opportunities and just go for it, like that's the best advice I can give anybody. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I love that you said that you have little notes for yourself because affirmations are a huge part of how I keep myself sane too. And um, I love, I love that you have them in your bathroom on your mirror because that's a place that you probably, you know, you look and do your makeup and all those things and you're, you question yourself as you're doing them, uh, even unconsciously sometimes, you know, we don't realize (laughs) the self-talk that we're doing unless it's right in front of us and it's, we make it known what we're saying, is it, is it positive? Is it negative? And like how we're actually looking at ourselves, our situations and how we start our day. So like you said, like in the bathroom right away in the, in the beginning of your day to start it off, like that's a great, great idea and a great piece of advice. Well, that's the one place I know I'm like getting out of bed and going to regardless of what I do yeah. the rest of the day. So. Well, and ideally it's probably somewhere that you're by yourself too. Yes. So. <laughs> yep. that's helpful too so that's awesome I like that tip um so okay so now like we're you're living your life you know the way that you see it you're living more fearlessly in everything that you're doing so I love to dream about where you're gonna be so think about like in the next five years where do you see yourself in five years um my original answer was thinking like on a beach, like I'm not even going to lie, but um, like I'm pretty content right now. So as long as I'm as content as I am now, I mean, I'll be okay because like this year I can't even like, you know how it is once you get there, like you're there like this year alone. I've been to Florida. I've been to Oregon. I've been to Las Vegas. I've been to California. I've been to Thailand. Yes. I stopped blocking my own way. So as long as I can continue to do that and travel and see places and do my job because I love making people feel beautiful and feel good about themselves, like I am completely happy. So as long as I, I can keep that. doing what I'm doing, I'll be good in five years. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So I have a, I have a personal question I would love to know is would you, would, how would you love to be able to like do, do you only do makeup? Do you only do hair? Do you do both? I do a little bit of both. Um, at work, my main, my main interest is hair. Um, I love doing makeup. I do it more so on myself, but I'm getting a little bit more into that. Um, but like I do, I do hair a lot because I'm the person that people come to when everyone else tells them what they want is impossible. So and you're like, try me girl. Show me what yeah, you got. Pretty much. <laughs> That's awesome. So what is your favorite thing to do? Is it coloring? Is it cutting? What's your, what's your specialty? Um, my specialty is coloring. Um, I'm the person that everybody calls when they have like dark hair and they want to be blonde. Because like you said, everyone always says, oh, that's so impossible. Well, trust me, it's not. It's about knowing how to do it. So, I mean, it might not happen overnight for everybody, but I'm able to explain the process and get there pretty quickly by doing it the right way. So that's awesome. I love that. Well, cool. So um, where can people connect with you? Where's a good place for them to find you? Um, They can find my business page on Facebook, um, 
Paulina Walschlager at Bombshells and Brows. Um, they can also look me up on my profile on Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram as p.walschlager and the Hairstylist Collective and Team True Beauty as well. So um, basically any social media platform under Paulina Walschlager, the Hairstylist Collective or Team True Beauty, you'll be able to find me. So very cool. Well, is there anything that you would love to leave the viewers with um, as a last message from you? Um, my last message is, like I said, um, get out of your own head because you can get there. It, if you just put your mind to it, you can do it. Definitely. I love that. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so glad that you could jump on here and share a little piece of you with us. And I know that they will find lots of value in this. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for watching and members who love yourself and live fearlessly. Thank <laughs> you.